Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of Arkansas Live. I want to personally thank you for joining me each day, and thank you for your emails and your notes <clears throat> when you send in your uh, partner sewing every month. Thank you for your comments and your kind remarks. We really appreciate those. It means a lot to us. All this week, we're teaching about sewing and saying. So get ready, get your Bible, pen, and paper. Stay tuned. Arkansas Live starts right now. You know, we started out with the sewing part, sewing and saying. And we talked about in Genesis 1, God said he gave us seeding seed. Seeding seed is herb-bearing seed. That's what the scripture calls it. It's designed to provide whatever you need. This is a spiritual principle, a spiritual law. Uh, Herb-bearing seed is seed that you sow, give, plant, that you are willing to sow or plant, a seed that contains or will produce fruit that you desire. Now, we've really already established that uh, from the scriptures. The ground, the soil, furnishes the nutrients necessary for the seed to grow. But according to Genesis 1.11, the seed is in itself. In other words, the seed that you plant, <clears throat> whether it's the Word of God, clothes, money, cars, houses, whatever you sow, friendship, favor, forgiveness, whatever you sow is what you're going to receive. And what you've sown, the seed is in itself. It contains what you desire. So, you know, you need to decide what you desire. Or, as the Word of God says, God will give you the desires of your heart. It, it, that's not a get-rich-quick scheme. That means God will give you, will reveal to you, put in you His desires. So your desires and His desires will be the same. And so as you begin to get this revelation, sowing and saying, now we'll probably won't have time to cover the saying part until next week. But that's just as important because if you sow and you say the contrary, you're going to kill your seed. If you say contrary to what you've sowed, uh, you're not going to receive the harvest or the fruit that you desire. So the seed contains the fruit. The ground provides the nutrients to grow the seed. The ground doesn't determine what you grow. The, the ground is designed to, re, to uh, grow whatever's put in it, whatever you sow. Now, we looked at the types of ground. There's wayside. That's the roadside around the field, uh, using an agricultural example. Uh, there's a, a stony ground, rocky ground, no root, little dirt. And then there's uh, the thorns and the thistles, and there's things that cover up the seed or overtake the plant. And then there's good ground. There's 30, 60, and 100 fold. But what about the seed? The seed is so important. And like I've told you many times, I like to garden, and sometimes you get seed <clears throat> that's no good. You get seed that's rotten. You get seed that's uh, uh, decaying. And you don't want to plant that seed because that's not going to produce the harvest that you desire. Okay, now let's look at the types of seed. I think some of you are going to be surprised. Types of seed. Let's look at Genesis 2 and verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Or eating thou shalt eat, is what the margin of reference is. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now remember Genesis 1.11 says the tree yielding fruit, the seed is in itself. So here's, here's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he said you, you're not to eat of that. Don't eat of that tree. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the day you eat of it, uh, in that day, you shall surely die. And the word die, there's plural, two deaths, spiritually and physically. 
Adam died spiritually the moment he ate of the fruit, uh, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But he didn't die physically for 930 years. And the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make him a helpmeet. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, the fowl of the air, brought them to Adam, see what he would call them. Notice, here's, here's the saying part. We're, we're not getting into it yet. We're not going to get into the saying part until next week. But here's the sowing and the saying. And uh, he, he ran every beast of the field to see what Adam would call them, to what he would say, what he would call them. And whatever Adam called them uh, was the living creature that, that was the name thereof. Now, notice in this uh, tree in the garden, uh, he said, you may eat of the fruit of all the trees in the garden, except the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can, you can eat of the tree of life, but you cannot eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we find out right off the bat, first of all, there is good and evil seed. He told him, don't eat of that tree. Don't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So that tree produced fruit, good and evil, good and evil seed. And if you ate of that seed, you would surely die. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. They died spiritually first when they ate of the seed and then they died physically 930 years later. Otherwise, there would have been no need for them to die. Death is never God's idea. Let me, let me, let me show you where death came from because, uh, you know, I do funerals. Um, I, I've done them over the years, for many years, especially a, as a pastor. But go with me over to 1 Corinthians and let's look at chapter 15. I think it's... Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In uh, verse 21, it says, uh, For since by man came death. Did you get that? Death was not God's idea. Never has been. It says by man came death. God never intended for man to die. He wanted him to live forever. Uh, since man... By man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. It, as in Adam, all died. Adam's transgression, Adam's sin, his rebellion. But in Christ, all are made alive. So death was not God's idea. Uh, uh, death came from Adam. He ate of the wrong tree. He ate of the fruit of the wrong tree. Now, in that disobedience and eating of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, there was a law established. And that law, uh, and God reminds the children of Israel in, of it in Deuteronomy. Uh, you see it all through the scriptures, Old and New Testament. You can have what is good. You can have what is evil. In fact, uh, God even uh, warns the children of Israel. He said, choose life that both you and your seed shall live. I will record this against you, whether you choose evil or whether you choose good. Choose life. Choose the good. Don't choose the evil. So we know from these many scriptures, <clears throat> there's good and evil seed. One produces life. The other produces death. There are precious seeds. There are corruptible seeds. There are incorruptible seeds. Uh, there are mingled seeds. <clears throat> These are the types of seeds that are listed in the Bible. And that's what we're talking about. Sowing and saying. Sowing. What kind of seed? Because the seed that you sow contains the fruit that you're going to eat. Now, it's not limited to agricultural, financial, whatever. But if you start talking the wrong thing, if you start talking criticism, strife, uh, uh, judgmentalism, if you start talking all of that, envy, criticizing people, 
you're sowing seed. That's, that's coming out of your mouth. Uh, and it's going into the atmosphere and it's, it's going to reproduce itself because the seed is in itself. And if you keep talking that, if you keep talking death, you know, I, and I don't mean this to be critical, of course, but I, I, I'm, a, I'm an observer of things. And it really bothers me uh, when I see, let's just take secular television, for example. You can't watch secular television for any length of time at all, but that they don't have a negative statement, negative news, negative weather, negative this every day. There's killings, shootings, rape, robbery, murder, all of these things. And if you listen to that long enough, you'll imbibe that. It'll get in you and it'll start coming out of you. But what really grieves me, I guess, the most <clears throat> is when you see these campaigns on television. I'm talking about our local affiliate stations or national networks. Uh, and, and I was listening to one the other day and they were, what they were saying was good. Uh, we need to help, uh, the impoverished, the poor, the, uh, uneducated. We need to give them good education. Uh, we need to show them how to get victory over, uh, poverty and gangs and death and killings. We need to help them, educate them. We need to show them. And you see the ads. You see some of the networks, affiliate networks, advertising victory over violence. That's a campaign. And they're, 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 they're really trying to do good. But if you look at the history, if you look at what's going on and who's saying what, there are people that are advertising one thing, but they're doing another. They're discriminating. Uh, they're racists, uh, they're critical, they're judgmental. Back when you had to disclose the um, investments into the marijuana growing business and distribution, there were the, when the marijuana companies came in, now it's casinos. <laughs> I don't think some people know what they're doing. And, you know, they think it's okay to go down here to to Pine Bluff, to Saracen. Those of you who live in Pine Bluff, do you even know what Saracen means? Saracen Casino? You look it up. It's, it's in the Islamic, it's in the uh, Islamic Arab uh, language, meaning uh, a thief, to steal. <laughs> that's what, that says it all. It's stealing your livelihood. It's stealing your money. It's, it's taking away from you. It's not, it's not benefiting uh, the culture or the population or the county or the state. It's benefiting those that have invested the money and built it. It's designed that way. The house always wins in the long run. Long run. And so you, you don't pay attention to these kind of things. And you see every day about the, the gangs that are killing each other and killing innocent bystanders and drive-by shootings and all this. And you hear these, these words in the background, victory over violence. But if you trace it back, some of the same people that are advocating victory over violence have invested in the marijuana business. They're making money off of marijuana, growing, trading, producing. It's, that's a house divided against itself. And the Bible says a house divided against itself will fall. You can do all the praying you want to. Uh, you can do all the community goodness that you want to in your city, in your community, uh, in your county, but if you if you're a house divided against, if you're saying one thing and doing another, you're not going to see any positive results. Uh, the Bible says, choose this day whom you're going to serve. Uh, are you going to benefit from the casinos or the marijuana uh, or the whatever? Uh, or are you going to stay with the word? <laughs> of course, I know those, these people don't know what the word is. Some of them, they. You think they're Christians, but what they're doing and saying is not uh, biblical. So you have to know the seed that you're sowing into. You have to know there's good seed and there's evil seed. One produces life. The other produces death. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I watch these things. I'm, I'm amazed by that. It's, it's humorous to me. 
you'll see this uh, <laughs> insurance company, very well known and respected insurance company. And the spokesman does a great job of telling you uh, if you would like uh, to buy this insurance, it's only nine ninety five, nine ninety five. You know, you can look that up on the Internet, but just by that nine ninety five and for nine ninety five. But you don't really uh, get the whole truth. And now there's another insurance company <laughs> that is exposing <laughs> their deception. <laughs> I saw the other day they're telling you for you know what you get for nine ninety five. Now, the competitive insurance company is competing against the nine ninety five. He said for nine ninety five, you get coverage. They say the nine ninety five per unit. But you have to find out what the per unit is. It's nine ninety five for one thousand dollar unit. So for nine ninety five, you're getting insurance coverage for one thousand dollars. The competing insurance is for less than a thousand dollars. So you you're paying nine ninety five. You're only getting a thousand bucks, and it does tell you down there uh, the the resources or the payoff or whatever is limited the first two years. Well, that would come under the guise of, how would you say, um, deceptive advertising, even though the old saying, buyer beware, uh, it, you're supposed to be smart enough to <laughs> investigate, to figure this out. And there's so much going on today in the world of the internet and, and computers and uh, AI and all this stuff, you don't know what you're getting into. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're tapping onto. They'll send you messages over your phone and saying, uh, uh, check into this. We've got your order waiting for you. There's no order. You didn't even place an order. But when you click on there, they got you. Uh, they're not supposed to be calling you, but they get you to call them. And all of these things taking place and people, bless their hearts, they're just so deceived. They believe anything or if, if you get stung enough, you revert over to the other side of the road in the ditch on the other side and you don't believe anything anybody says. <clears throat> That's not good either. The Bible says not to despise prophesying, but it says to discern the fruit. Look at the fruit. Look it up. Check it out. Uh, if, if you're going to exercise this law of sowing and save, saying, then you're going to have to look at, see, at seeing what seed you're uh, sowing. One produces life, one produces death. So the types of seed, there's good seed and there's evil seed. <clears throat> I'll have probably some more comments on these things as we move along. Okay, let's go over to Psalm 126. And let's read uh, Psalm 126, verse 6. He that goeth forth and weep, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. So your seed determines the harvest. The ground furnishes the nutrients to grow the seed, but the seed is in itself, and what you sow is what you're going to reap. Sowing, very important that you know these things. Psalm 126, <clears throat> uh, start at verse 1. The Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. <clears throat> then was our mouth filled with laughter, our tongue with singing. Then say they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O God. <laughs> Israel was always in trouble with God because of their rebellion and their sinfulness. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. <laughs> Some people have determined that to mean, um, oh, I'm just, I'm just grieved at my giving. I just, I, I'm sorry I have to give this up, but I'm going to give it anyway, but I don't want to. No, no, that's not what it's talking about. It's not about crying over your seed. You don't put your offering in the bucket at church and then just watch it go to the end of the aisle and say, well, there goes, there goes my seed. No, you plant the seed. 
you sow into good soil. And then, and like I said, we'll get to this next week. Then you say over your seed. You talk to your seed. You say there's power in that. Let's go on with these. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed that doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Or you could say bringing his harvest with him. Why? He sowed precious seed. Now, what is precious seed? Now, we know what good seed is. We know what evil seed is. But what is precious seed? Precious seed, if you look the word precious up in your uh, Greek, precious seed is seed of great value or cherished. It's something that is cherished or it's of great value. That's what precious seed is. I have an example about that. Years ago, when Jeannie and Ronnie and I were traveling on the road, we were down in South Louisiana, and it was after Christmas. My dad had given me a beautiful leather jacket. I mean, it was gorgeous, and I never had anything like it. And I was down there uh, in, uh, I think it's probably February, and my dad gave me this for Christmas, and I was down there, and I was, we were holding a meeting, I don't remember what town or, or whether it was a church or a hotel conference room. But anyway, there was a, a friend of ours, a man that I knew. He was a pastor of a church in South Louisiana. And uh, he came into in the, to the service. He's sitting out there on the front row. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I want you to give your coat to that minister. Whoa. Well, first of all, I thought, you know, my daddy gave me that coat. (laughs) And we begin to dialogue with the Lord. Excuses, Uh, Lord, my daddy gave me that coat. What would he think about if he found out I gave it away? Or that's a beautiful coat. I I really like that coat, Father. And he said it again. I want you to give that coat. I want you to sow that into his life and ministry. Oh, man. Now, this was early in the ministry. This was in the mid-70s, and I, I was really fighting. I don't mean fighting against the Lord. I mean fighting in my own self. What do I do? So I spent uh, some time in prayer, and I finally, as they say, prayed through. You don't really pray through to any place. You, you gain ascendancy over the flesh. And so I said, okay, Lord, I'll do it. Uh, tonight when he comes to the meeting, Uh, I'm going to give him this coat. And he said, good. And I want you to tell him uh, this when you put it on him. You tell him that this coat is from me and it's a coat of love. And I'm giving it to you, to him. And so I did. He came out before we started. I said, would you come backstage with me just a minute? I got something to give you. And I put that coat on him, laid hands on him, prayed, told him what the Lord said. This is a coat of love. And because I love you, I'm giving you this coat. Well, he cried and I cried (laughs) and he walked out, sat down, finished the service. Well, I had such a peace and a victory. That was precious seed to me. That coat was precious seed. I cherished it. It was of great value. Well, the next night we started the meeting and he came in and he walked up to the platform. He said to me, he said, uh, uh, can I see you before the service starts? I said, sure. Went backstage. And he said, you know, when you gave me that coat last night, he said, I didn't know how to respond to that. I didn't know what to do. And uh, he said, I told the Lord, Lord, I don't need a coat. Uh, I appreciate blah, blah, blah. But he said, and the Lord told me, now watch this. The Lord told me that when I got to the meeting tonight to give you the coat back. And to lay hands on you and prophesy. And this is what he said. He said, this is indeed a coat of love. And because you were willing to give it, I'm giving it back. (laughs) Again, we both cried and praised the Lord and whatever. That was a test. And the Lord asked me to give the coat, to sow the seed. It was precious seed. But because I obeyed him, he gave me the coat back. It was a beautiful, touching uh, 
lesson that I learned. But I went on months, years later, and I gave the coat away again. And this time they, they kept the coat. But the coat was a valuable, cherished, precious seed because it came from my father, my earthly father. So here's precious seed. When you sow precious seed, it's seed that is of great value. It's cherished. You know, when we pastored, uh, we pastored for 35 years and uh, we got a lot of things in the offering uh, over 35 years that uh, jewelry and things that were heirlooms and whatever. And we had a working relationship with a, uh, a jeweler here in town and uh, we would go and we would have it, uh, <coughs> we would have it uh, evaluation. And the person that did the giving was supposed to, according to the IRS, they're supposed to establish the value. But we went and we would have them uh, appraise the jewelry and then we would give them a tax receipt for what it was appraised for. And then uh, once or twice a year, whenever, we would have sales of things that had been given to the ministry and sold them mostly to the jewelry store uh, and give these people credit and the cash would go into uh, the church. What were they giving? They were giving precious seed. They were giving rings, necklaces, earrings, jewelry. They were giving heirlooms. What is that? That is precious seed. It's seed of great value or something that is cherished. So identify your seed. Is it worthless to you? And you're just getting rid of it? Well, you can take that to the Goodwill or Salvation Army. But if it's precious seed, ask the Lord where he wants you to sow it because that's where you're going to make the greatest impact and get the greatest harvest. Now, tomorrow we're going to uh, talk about corruptible seed or incorruptible seed. This is seed uh, that is either decayed, perishing, or it's seed that is incorruptible, non-decaying, or immortal. So join me for tomorrow's Arkansas Live. Remember, Jesus is Lord over Arkansas and wherever in the world you're watching. Too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at vtntv.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at vtntv.com.